Please be seated. Your Excellency, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, First Lady, Mrs. Arya Devi Ali, Heads of the Disciplined Services, Honorable Prime Minister Mark Phillips and Mrs. Mignon Phillips, Honorable Vice President Bharat Jagdeo and Ministers of the Government, President of Suriname, your Excellency Chandrika Pusod Santoki and First Lady Mrs. Melissa Sanacheri Santoki and Delegation, former Presidents, Chancellor of the Judiciary, Madam Justice Yonet Cummings Edwards, esteemed members of the Envoy from the Government of Barbados, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps and the Consular Corps, parents of the President, Mohammed. Usman and Bibi Shariman Ali, and older brother Mohammed Akhtar, mother of the First Lady, Mrs. Parvati, distinguished invitees, members of the media, those listening and viewing across Guyana, the diaspora, and the rest of the world, Guyanese brothers and sisters all. It is my distinct honor to welcome you to the official inauguration ceremony of the ninth Executive President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. The ceremony here at the National Cultural Center will now be blessed with prayers from the Christian, Hindu, and Muslim faiths, as well as a prayer in the indigenous Makushi language. Prayers will be offered by Reverend Nikolai Philadelphia, Pandit Aditya Pusod, Brother Imran Ali and Miss Mary Michael of Katoka Village, Rupanuni, will offer a prayer in the Makushi language. Kindly stand. Good morning, let's pray. Father, we give thanks and praise to your mighty name. We thank you for your grace, we thank you for your love and your mercy. We thank you because this is the day that you have made, and so we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this inauguration ceremony today. We thank you for our president, Lord God, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali. We thank you for the prime minister. We thank you for the vice president. We thank you for the ministers of government. We ask your blessings today in the name of Jesus. We ask that you will give our president the wisdom that is needed for leadership. We ask that you will keep him in good health and strength. We ask, Lord, that you will bless the entire government. And we pray that in this time, Guyana will progress, that Guyana will go forward, that Guyana will be blessed, and Guyana will excel and increase on every side. So we speak the blessings of the Lord God over the president today. We speak the blessings of the Lord God over this ceremony today. And it is in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. Namaskar. We all pray. Today, we pray for our nation. Today we pray for our young, vibrant president and his cabinet. Today we pray for the well-being of our people. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahe Tejasvinavadhi Tamastu Mavitvishavahe O Masatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya, Mrityor Mam Ratam Gamaya, Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukina, Sarve Santo Niramaya, Sarve Badrani Pashantu, Marcus Chedukabhag Bhave, Om Shamte, Shamte, Shamte Hariyom. We pray that we all be protected. May we all be nourished. 
May we work together with great energy. May our studies be enlightened, and may those who are enlightened help each other. And may there be peace here and within. O Lord, keep us, keep our president, not in the phenomenal world of unreality, but make him go towards reality and understand each other. Keep us not in the ignorant state of darkness, but make us go towards light. And keep me not in the world of mortality, but make all of us go into that of immortality. May we all be happy. May we all be free from illness. May we all see that which is good and auspicious. May no, no one suffer. We pray for peace, peace, and peace. We pray today as we glorify you, O Lord, that our president and his team use every aspect of their intelligence, knowledge, and experience to build a prosperous Guyana now and in the future. Om Shanti. Let us pray. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawmid Deen Iyaka Na'budu wa Iyaka Nasta'een اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين I seek refuge in Allah, in God Almighty, from Satan the accursed. I begin in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. All praise and thanks are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord and Master of the worlds, the beneficent, the merciful, Master of the day of judgment. Thee alone we worship and thee alone we ask for help. Guide us on the straight path, the path of those on whom you have blessed not the path of those who have earned your anger, nor of those who have gone astray. O Allah, O God Almighty, we thank you for all the favors you have bestowed upon us. O Allah, O God Almighty, we thank you for entrusting the responsibility of leading our beautiful country upon His Excellency, Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali. A position that carries great trust, dignity, integrity, and responsibility. We pray that Allah, God Almighty, grant you the strength, patience, courage, and tolerance to discharge this responsibility honorably. We pray that under your leadership, the well-being of all Guyanese will be protected. May he grant you the capacity to bridge the racial barrier and unite our people as one. O Allah, O God Almighty, we pray for our nation to remain tolerant and loving. Remove prejudice from our hearts and allow us to love our brothers and sisters in humanity. O Allah, O God Almighty, allow our government to remain accountable to the people. Give them vision and wisdom as they take decisions to move our country forward. O Allah, O God Almighty, bless His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali and his government to build a future in which all Guyanese will prosper. Rabbana taqabbal dua. O Allah, accept our prayer. Amen. Purman by Kong Semang Paba and the Yungong Cabo Twizing Sir Hignang and the Abrazara Nai Paba 
मुड़ोगे हो गुणमान थुया सड़ है अन्ना पेड़ सह अन्ना राम कसे मुड़ोबे से पता अन्ना पेड़ सताने अन्ना पता से पौड़ गंग तो राम कसे पावा तुम बतो दाने तो पढ़ माग अन्ना प्रेसिडेंट पढ़ माग से पावा इ नया का दाता बे इ बोकर पुणे बेवे दो दोंग इन्द हम बगेत ग से ने अन्ना कंट्री दा दो बिया तो जावे दो दाउड रवाई पावा अन्ना मिनिस्टर साम तो मिन सेविकात को देखे से ने कंट्री दा दबता मरो बे अन्ना राम कुसे से ताना ए बड़े सताने मरो बे ए दबे ए दबे मागी बड़ी मुख मरो निगिंग ए दबे अन्ना कौन बे कुसे अन्य ना रंग के या तू नरु मरो के मानतु या तू इन्हों है करे नेतांग किताब इन्हों मर कार हुया आई पदांग आमु जीसस क्राइस्ट से दाई अ Thank you, brothers and sister. And let us keep offering continued blessings for smooth governance. The President had his first Juma at the Queenstown Masjid yesterday. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, world-renowned Guyanese-born diplomat Sir Shradat Ramphal has called on us to seize the opportunity to build a better country. And I quote, Guyanese everywhere and Guyana's many friends are relieved and grateful that the worst of times are over. Now must begin the best of times." End of quote. A monumental task is ahead to heal, to govern for all. And as we reflect on each of our roles in this nation-building process, let us listen and enjoy the police, the Guyana Police Force Band, MS and Choir, as they perform one of our beloved national songs, O oh Beautiful Guyana, composed by Valerie Muriel Rodway. <clears throat>
if we absolutely love this beautiful country of ours. This is the inauguration ceremony of the ninth executive president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. And from the outset, the new president has assured that he will unite Guy Guyanese of all ethnicities from all regions around meaningful engagement and difficult issues and will work hard on reconciliation and healing because Guyana belongs to all Guyanese, the indigenous peoples, those of African, Chinese, European, Indian and Portuguese ancestry and all the beautiful mixtures of these groups. Coming on stage next, we will see the X Factor Dance Company Students of the Swami Vivekanandan Cultural Center attached to the High Commission of India and members of the Pakuri Culture Troupe from St. Cuthbert's Mission performing a variety of dances representing Guyana's rich cultural diversity from the African dance forms, Indian Kathak and contemporary styles and indigenous Matapi traditional dances. Please welcome them.
A beautiful multicultural performance showcasing Guyana's rich dance culture and spanning our unique heritage. This is inauguration 2020 and due to COVID-19, thousands are viewing on the various live streams and social media, watching on television and listening on a national radio across our 10 administrative regions. You're all very welcome, and thank you for being part of history today. Music. Music is one of the pillars of our culture. We sing to tell our stories. We sing to celebrate our history. We sing to inspire generations to come. The song we will hear next was originally composed and performed by Guyanese Calypsonian Ivan D. Ivan Harry and released back in 1990. 26 years later, in 2016, she rewrote the song as a tribute for Guyana's Golden Jubilee, but kept the original chorus. This version was arranged and produced by gospel singer Samuel Medas, and today will be performed by Jeremy Sobers on the grand piano. Please welcome songstress Jackie Jacks as she performs a song paying homage to beautiful Guyana. So 
Oh! 
Thank you very much. Mr. Jeremy Sobers, thank you. Beautiful Jackie Jacks wearing a gown designed and created by House of Pearson. It's a beautiful love story, love song about our country. Thank you. Can we have a round of applause again for Jackie Jacks and Jeremy Sobers? This is the ceremonial inauguration of Guyana's ninth executive president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, with special guests, the President of Suriname, and esteemed members on behalf of the government of Barbados, the Honorable Prime Minister Mia Motley, special welcome, Honorable Vice President Barrett Jagdeo. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we will invite young Nikhil Sankar, a sixth form student of Queen's College, who will perform a poem entitled Our History, Our Hope, composed by another student, Kareem Bacchus, of the Annandale Secondary School. Please welcome Nikhil. Our History, Our Hope, by Kyrene Bacchus. We have memorized Guyana, how it was born, who we have become, and where we are going. In ceremonies, in silence, we say the words, telling the stories, and sing the old songs. We like the places they take us to, mostly we do. We hear our foreparents speak. The rich taste of our struggles is on our tongue. But where are we going? And why? We mean to be the people we want to be. One people, one nation, one destiny. But how will we fashion the future? Only we can say how. We, the children of Guyana's soil, we need to do so now. With waving hands and without a row, we are six peoples coming together, and we must not fall apart. We cannot let chaos make its way to our hearts. We cannot let ignorance spread itself. We are too smart. We know what our foreparents did and what we should do to keep our legacy true. We must grow, believing ourselves towards all that we can be. Just, compassionate, equal, and free. The future is in our hands. We are one people, one nation, one destiny. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil, for reminding us that we all have a role to play in building a just Guyana through fairness and accountability and protecting the environment for our benefit in generations to come. It's a beautiful sunny Saturday here in the capital city and while the main event is being held here in Georgetown, the president will soon be embarking on visits to all of the regions to meet with you, the people who have stood tall and firm through an entire period when the nation was processing matters to do with governance and the threat of a pandemic. We kept the faith, we sustained hope and we looked out for each other mostly in love. May this next song reaffirm our love and commitment to our motherland. Please welcome back the Guyana Police Force Band, MS and Choir, 
conducted by Senior Superintendent Charlene Stort to perform Valerie Rodway's Hymn for Guyana's Children. <laughs> Last year, we commemorated the birth centenary of Guyana's patriotic and classical music composer, Valerie Muriel Rodway, and a building was renamed in her honor. Valerie Rodway's talent moved beyond ethnicity and religions. She moved beyond the prejudices of the urban and rural and helped us through music to discover our Guyanese-ness. May I now invite Royston Alkins, a social entrepreneur, youth and sport developer, and former national youth cricketer and foreign service officer for a humble and honorable task at this time. Thank you, Mr. Ceremonies. His Excellency, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana, and Mrs. Ali. The Honorable Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, Prime Minister of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. The Honorable Dr. Mark Jagdio, Vice President of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. His Excellency Chandrikar Santoki, President of the Republic of Suriname. Her Excellency Chandrikar, sorry, Melissa Santoki Sitaran, First Lady of the Republic of Suriname. Chancellor of the Judiciary, Madam Justice Yonet Cummins Edwards, Honorable Ministers of Government, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, Special Invitees, Department Heads of Government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. Good morning, my name is Royston Alkins, and I'm a career foreign officer within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation. Today I have a simple, it's an honorable task. His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali was sworn in as the ninth executive president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana on the 2nd of August, 2020. On that momentous occasion, His Excellency Dr. Ali became one of the youngest presidents to ever take the oath of office. He is 40 years old, married to Ms. Arya Ali, and together they have one child. Dr. Ali assumes the presidency of Guyana at the pivotal juncture of our nation's history. As we are all aware, Guyana is transitioning into becoming a regional energy giant. Consequently, it is no mere coincidence that a young, ardent, and energetic servant of the people of Guyana has been charged with the leadership of this nation at this time. Dr. Ali is a Guyanese man of the people who spent his childhood living in the village of Leonor on the west coast of Damarara and on the island of Leguan in the Escobar River. He attended Leonor nursery and primary schools and Cornelia Ida primary. 
His Excellency completed his secondary education at the St. Stanislaus College. His Excellency is also holder of a Doctorate of Philosophy degree in Urban and Regional Planning from the University of the West Indies. His distinguished political career to date began in 2006 when he first became a member of the National Assembly of Guyana. In addition to his portfolio as Housing Minister and Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce, His Excellency also performed the functions of Prime Minister. Little did we know then that those stints were equipping Dr. Ali with the necessary skills and competencies that will see him in good stead as he performs his new role as president. Much has often been said about the efficacy of having youth in pivotal leadership roles. In His Excellency, the importance of young people at the helm is no longer just a promise, but a reality. He represents both experience and youth. President Ali embodies all the characteristics and traits that Guyana needs at this time. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure as I invite you to stand in applause as we invite to the podium Guyana's ninth executive president, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I think it's safe enough distancing for me to take off the mask. His Excellency, President Chandraka Santoki and First Lady, the Honorable Edmund Hinkson, Representative of Prime Minister Mia Motley, Honorable Prime Minister, Vice President, members of the diplomatic community, Chancellor of the Judiciary, members of Cabinet, Chief Justice, heads of the Joint Services, distinguished invited guests, my brothers and sisters of Guyana. My first words must be of thanks. Thanks to Almighty God, who has guided us through adversity and challenges, helping us to overcome them and to stand here today as one people, one nation, one destiny. <laughs> Thanks to my parents, my wife, son Zaid, my brother, grandparents, mother-in-law, members of my wider family, my teachers, neighbors, colleagues, and all those who played an integral role in my own development. Thanks to the member states of CARICOM and international community for keeping vigil with our nation over the last five months as we fought to hold high the flag of Guyana as a democratic state deserving of high regard. Some of those who stayed alert with us through those dark days are with us as a new dawn dispels the darkness of despair and shines a light of unbounded expectation on us today. I take this opportunity to acknowledge the resident diplomat diplomatic corps from the United Kingdom, Canada, the European Union, the United States, who so fearlessly defended our people's political rights. Thank you. Other organizations stood up with us, among them the Organization of American States, the Carter Center, and the Commonwealth Group of Nations. They were each outstanding in their own way, and in time, their names will form a lexicon of heroes of our nation. They were epitomized by one man who put our country before himself in his determination that democracy should never die in Guyana, nor should our people be derived of their political rights. 
that man was Owen Seymour Arthur. The leader of the Commonwealth Elections Observer Mission and former Prime Minister of Barbados. Both, but for his all untimely and profoundly tragic death, Owen Arthur would have been loved, would have loved to be with us today. He was a true friend of Guyana, a man committed to justice and the rights of the people. I honor him today. And I call on all here assembled to stand up and join me in a moment of silence to this warrior in our cause, Owen Seymour Arthur. Thank you. I would also like to thank the chairwoman of GCOM for the role she played in ensuring we are here today in a democratic process. <laughs> With a full heart, I thank the majority of the electorate of Guyana who reposed in me their confidence to serve as president of our beloved nation. I thank the leaders, supporters, volunteers, and members of my party, the PPP Civic, for their extraordinary support at the March 2nd polls. <laughs> their efforts and the PPPC's formation of the government will be transformed into a victory, not for them alone, but for all Guyanese who aspire to a vibrant nation that delivers benefit for all. To those of you who may not have supported me, I also thank you for your adherence to democracy and the rule of law. And I promise one and all, those who supported me and those who did not, that I will be the president for all the people of Guyana. And I will serve each of you with affection, without discrimination, and with every attention to fairness and equity. In my service to Guyana, I will not see a nation divided by ethnicity. I will see a nation cemented in unity. This land of Guyana is our common homeland. It is our common heritage and every citizen within it is equal and will be treated equally. My story is similar to that of most of you. I came from humble beginnings, experiencing struggles, circumstances, and aspirations no different from yours. As president, I will have to walk with kings in our country's interests, but I assure you, that I will never lose the common touch. My first and last responsibility will be to the people of Guyana, all of them. From this day forward, our one nation and our people must join together to peacefully transition our country to a pathway of economic and social development at home and respect and regard abroad. From this day forward, we must, each of us, become our brothers and sisters keeper, ensuring that in our journey to progress and prosperity, no one is left behind. In this context, my government intends to fulfill the pledges in the manifesto in which we contested the March 2nd general and regional elections. Central to fulfilling those pledges will be the collaborative and consultative relationship with the private sector, labor, 
and many other stakeholders in our society. The private sector, whose commission was stalwart in insisting on a credible election result reflecting the will of the people. The private sector showed beyond any shadow of a doubt that they care about the political and social stability of our country and its prospect for economic prosperity. My government will work in partnership with all stakeholders, the private sector, to make Guyana a center for economic activity that will radiate throughout this hemisphere and beyond. We have already started to examine, from a fiscal perspective, the extent of support we can give to the various sectors to simulate a resumption of their economic activities, especially putting back to work people who have been dislodged because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In this regard, I now highlight some of the programs and projects that we will start to implement immediately to focus on wealth and job creation. We'll create a single window clearance system to reduce bureaucracy and costs of doing business. This will make it easier for local and foreign investors to start up and establish businesses in our economy that is forecast to grow by 52.8%, surpassing all 26 Latin American and Caribbean states. This huge productive growth has to do a lot with our oil and gas fines that promise recoverable petroleum resources estimated at more than 8 million barrels. We are conscious that the proceeds of this resource must be managed in a transparent way that will assure the people of Guyana that they will be the beneficiaries in a fair and equitable manner. That is why my government will establish the legal and regulatory foundation upon which a new modern economy will be built, striking a vital balance between our traditional sectors and the new and emerging industries, including oil and gas, technology, and communication. Our legislative agenda will create a regulatory framework to enhance sustainable productivity but a, with a human face in an environmentally friendly manner. We will also establish a petroleum commission to ensure that the oil and gas sector is not subjected to undue political interference. More importantly, we will ensure that every cent of the revenues from the sector is accounted for, as well as every cent that is spent. There must be no doubt in your minds, in the minds of our people, that our country, our nation, our people are the beneficiaries of the oil and gas sector. To stimulate business enterprises, we'll reduce the cost of energy by at least 50% through a mix of hydro, gas, solar, wind, adding more than 400 megawatts of newly installed capacity over the next five years. High transportation costs will also be tackled through transformative investment, like the Deep Water Harbor, the Linden to Letham Road, a high-span bridge across the Demerara River, and other transformational infrastructure that will open up our economy and bring benefit creating jobs for the people of Guyana. Our intention is to open up every part of our country and to join them up so that new opportunities are created for housing settlements and businesses and to create and expand tourism and other services industry. industries. We want to build a Guyana that is ripe with business opportunities humming with employment expansion 
and growing perennially in prosperity. To aid all this, we will scale up the provision of internet services across the country, empowering businesses and persons. We know that building physical infrastructure and creating the framework for prosperity is only one part of ensuring success. A vital part is training our people to take advantage of the opportunities and the framework. Our goal is to facilitate jobs for every Guyanese that want to work, not to provide them with the skills they need alone. That is why we invest in training and retraining our workforce force so that they can stake their claim in our nation's prosperity. On this point, the workers of this country, the bedrock of our nation, have suffered untold hardship. Once proud men who work in the sugar industry, bauxite industry, and other industries, from, from sun up to sun, sun down, never complaining about the back-breaking nature of their jobs, are today barely scratching a living. Their anguish is not only that they can't have a decent wage, but it is they cannot feed their families. These conditions do not reflect the Guyana we want, and we have to fix it and fix it urgently. And it is certainly not a Guyana we should allow to continue. The sugar industry has virtually been abandoned in the last five years, and the workers have been deserted. No attempt has been made to seek a new path by which aspects of the industry could be salvaged for the production of profitable sugar and sugar-based niche products that would maintain jobs and, by doing so, maintain the dignity of labor. While we are putting together <clears throat> the torn fra fragments, the picture of the industry appears deeply distressing. The assets of Gaisuku seem to have been stripped by Nissil and disposed of. The once greatest contributor to our nation's economy has been beaten down to its knees and the workers tossed to unemployment and misery. We intend to raise up the industry and to help it and its workers resume the once proud place in our economy. It is bad enough that I must draw your attention to other areas in our economy, including bauxite, rice, agriculture, forestry, mining. We have already commenced work on ensuring we do all that is necessary and possible within the constraints to put back this, this industry on the path of growth and development. Sadly, the workers bore the brunt of the incompetence, inefficiency, and irresponsibility. My government will dismantle the policies of the previous administration that created an environment completely unfavorable to workers. The people of this country must now be second, must not be second and third class citizens in their own land. Their rights and entitlements must be protected or the struggle of our great labor leaders, Bahadur Singh, J.A. Nicholson, Hubert Nathaniel Critchlow, and Ashton Chase would have been in vain. The new Ministry of Labor that we have just created will be tasked with a noble undertaking of creating work rewarding labor with adequate wages and of respecting the rights in every sector, every industry, and every business. 
We intend to give workers the place of pride they deserve and the rewards that they merit. This land is our land. Every Guyanese has a right to live in it, work in it, and thrive in it. Our Guyana must no longer be counted as one of the poorest nations in the Western Hemisphere. We must no longer be scorned or treated contemptuously anywhere in the world. We must welcome back to their homeland, our diaspora, who played such a positive and constructive role in defense of our democracy. They may live abroad, but their love remains in Guyana, as they passionately demonstrated over the last five months. My government intends to embrace Guyanese abroad as we enlist them here at home. The wealth of our country must reach the pockets of our people in a fair and equitable manner so that we can climb on the mountain top of prosperity respected by all. Over the next five years, my government will build a ladder on which we'll climb together as a nation to the mountain top in unity and with dignity and pride. I'm conscious that while we are building our nation to give a better life to our current generation, we must also lay the foundation for future generations. That is why I've appointed many young persons into my cabinet will chart the future, and they will have a strong hand in the future we chart. Additionally, I will establish a Youth Advisory Policy Committee in the coming weeks that will reflect our country's rich religious and ethnic diversity. The future is theirs. It is right that we, even now, they should help to shape it. In our manifesto, we pledge to pursue inclusionary constitutional governance. I intend to see that that pledge is implemented. To do so will require certain constitutional reforms, which will be, which will be formulated in consultation with the people. We'll conduct a national conversation in which all ideas, all ideas will contend and all voices will be heard. And always, we will enhance parliamentary democracy, support an independent and efficient judiciary, and ensure that the rule of law and the constitutional rights of every Guyanese are respected by all. All of us are painfully aware of the trauma and anguish that our people endured over the last five months. As vigorous attempts were made to destroy our democratic credentials and deny the will of the electorate, all of us have an obligation to the nation and to ourselves to ensure that never again should any generation of our people be subjected to such unlawful behavior. <laughs> Therefore, a review of events related to the electoral process over the last five months will begin shortly in order to determine forensically exactly what transpired and to hold accountable. <laughs> and to hold accountable any person who sought to pervert and corrupt the system. More importantly, we will pursue the necessary reforms to make our democracy stronger 
and our electoral process more transparent. Part and parcel of a strong democracy is robust security. Every citizen, every home, every business place must feel safe from criminals and from crime. The air that we breathe in our beloved Guyana must be free from the stench of crime. Therefore, my government will strengthen the police force by providing it with the tools it needs to keep our people safe, including training, modern equipment, adequate vehicles, and a capacity for rapid response. Every life in our nation matters, and my government will ensure that every life is protected from harm. It is our duty and our responsibility, and we'll work towards this. The COVID-19 pandemic has already claimed too many lives. Everything possible must be done to protect our people from this dreadful and dreaded disease. That is why, as president, I will personally and urgently participate in my government's program to stop infection by the coronavirus, curb its spread, and safeguard the health of our nation. After completing a rapid assessment, I've already begun to establish a structure to tackle the virus as effectively as possible. We are creating a COVID response unit comprising of government policymakers, represented by the, private set, by the Prime Minister and the Minister of Health, and our regional and international partners such as CARICOM, PAHO, UNDP, and, the, and our private sector. We are dismantling the political, the political intervention and structure and the bureaucracy, and we are putting it into the hands of policymakers who are capable and competent to deal with this issue. The UNET will be guided by a collaborative policy to address medical responses and to create a COVID-19 impact socio-economic plan for our people. <clears throat> Since taking office in just one week, we have mobilized and received 46,000 rapid antibody test kits, personal protection equipment, approximately 240,000 surgical masks, face shields, gongs, and other urgently needed supplies. In addition to the rapid test kits, the Prime Minister of Barbados, the Honorable Maya Mutley, is sending us an additional 15,000 PCR test kits, which, which I'm informed came in with a delegation representing her. <laughs> By next week, we should receive another 10,000 PCR test kits from PAHO with a commitment to supply an additional 40,000 PCR test kits. <laughs> we have assessed three PCR testing machines and brought them into operation with two more being sourced and plans are in motion to train persons, including persons from the hinterland areas in the use of the PCR machines and rapid test kits. Thank you. We have commenced work on securing immediately an initial sum of 4.5 billion as emergency response to help at the household level. We met with the governor of the central bank and advised him to extend regulatory permission 
so as was to allow for bankers to continue extending moratoriums. We have also looked at the possibility of adjusting the reserve requirement, which will allow the banks to have more disposable resources and tying that adjustment with lower interest rates. We have started to examine from a fiscal perspective what support we can give to the private sector and other groups, all with a view of supporting a resumption of the economic activities and putting our people back to work. We have reached out to several multilateral and bilateral sources with a view to urgently mobilize financial resources of the magnitude that is necessary to overcome the effects of this pandemic. I must say, the response has been encouraging. As you can see, we have hit the ground running. We do not intend to slacken the pace. There is much to be done. We will have a nation, we have, we still have a nation to build and a people to rise up. In pursuing this objective, we'll build closer partnerships with our CARICOM sister states and with the United States of America and Canada, which are our traditional partners, and the UK, and friends in this hemisphere, who have all done so much to help us preserve our democracy. Guyana was a founding member of CARICOM, and before it, CARIFTA. We remain faithful to the ambitions and expectations of the Caribbean community. We are grateful that CARICOM stood by our side in the recent electoral crisis. And a community defended democracy by scrutinizing the national recount of votes of the March 2nd elections. Courageously and professionally. <laughs> History will ever recall the single role of regional solidarity. But we go further as we look ahead to more prosperous times for Guyana. We also look to enhancing the objectives of the Caribbean community and the fortunes of all its people who are our brothers and sisters. We will play our role in CARICOM by joining our sister states in securing a more equitable place for the small states of the world and for developing countries generally. More particularly, we'll raise our voices in chorus with other CARICOM countries to combat the threat of climate change. Under our watch, CARICOM will not find Guyana lagging in our support for and our duty to the principles, policies, and pledges of regional integration. For your new government, there will be no policy more sacred than that relating to our borders. As Guyanese, all of us stood with the previous administration in defense of Guyana's patrimony. For us, Guyana's territorial integrity is never a matter for domestic division. It is always a matter for national cohesion. It was the PPPC government that secured our maritime border with Suriname under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea in 2007. We settled that border, which has already opened the doors to offshore oil and gas development for both countries. In this connection, I especially welcome to this inaugural ceremony my brother, 
President Chandrika Santoki, our closest neighbors. I look forward to working closely with him in the interests of our two peoples and peoples of the wider Caribbean community. It was also a PPPC government in 2014 that put an end to the good offices dialogue with Venezuela, our neighbor to the West, because it has become for them a strategy of prolonging contention rather than of seeking solution. Therefore, the PPPC gave full support to the former administration when, when, as initiated by us, they submitted the Venezuela contention to the National Court of Justice. We shall not descend. The sovereignty of our state, the integrity of our territory, of both land and sea, is a sacred trust we must defend, and we will do so in collaboration with our partners and allies. In being faithful to that trust, we shall be loyal to our enduring vision of a Guyana as one indivisible. My brothers and sisters, we stand at the beginning of a road that could lead us all to a bright and prosperous future, a future that would take us to the famed El Dorado that eluded us in past generations. I assure you that we can take the road and march up it bravely, confident that we can find not only harmony as one people, but also prosperity as one nation. Our destiny can be a great country, if a great country in which all who reside within it have the opportunity to achieve the, to achieve the means and to succeed. I, plus, I pledge to you today as your president to work in your interests, all of you, without fear or favor, with great affection and no discrimination. This is our land, our collective homeland. We all love and for which we want only the best. I offer you my hand, my hands of friendship, my hands of cooperation, my hands that is willing to hold all of Guyana, embrace all of Guyana as we charter the future together. Let us join as one people, one nation, in a single purpose to build our beloved country for the good of all. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless our dear land of Guyana. Thank you, Your Excellency, President, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali. May you lead, sir, with humility, distinction, and compassion. After the President's first address to the nation, let us now listen and appreciate the words of this final national song that will instill a sense of pride in our country and its future as we welcome back the Guyana Police Force Band and Choir to perform William R. A. Pilgrim's Salute to Guyana. Mm -hmm. 